overall impressions tonight and with the fact that Markel was not in the game? I, I was happy with what we did tonight. Um, I think that it was a, uh, it felt more of a physical game. I think that we ran better. I mean, that's a heck of a team. You start seeing Kyrie and Haywood and Horford and Marcus, they, they really, they really have a good team. And I thought that our guys, you know, for the most part, um, played hard. There are stats that you looked at that you'd like to take back, you know, the offensive rebounding and the turnovers especially. But in general, I, I leave tonight um, happy with a lot of things. How would you compare Ben's performance from tonight to Wednesday? I think, um, you know, he, he missed some free throws. He missed some shots. I think he only had eight, eight shots. But I feel like he, he's just going to grow to continually impact the game in so many ways, things that aren't even showing up on a stat sheet. I feel like, uh, you know, him growing to get a better understanding of, of how to use the offense to help himself and the team is evolving. Um, but I thought, uh, you know, Ben had some, had some uh, time where I was happy with what he did. I thought that, uh, you know, pushing the pace especially is something that stands out most to me. How would you assess how Ben did defending smaller players tonight? I thought he was okay. With the sample size was small. You know, we had him on Kyrie for a while. I want to keep looking at that. Um, but I, th I thought he was okay. When he's on a guy like Kyrie, how big of an adjustment is it, not just on the ball, but also off the ball with chasing like that? It is. I, I think that's the area that gets most uh, difficult. You know, to just come down and guard somebody, I think Ben can do that. Uh, when you have to start chasing through pin downs and gaggle actions and different curl cuts, it gets a little bit difficult. But I think when it was static, I thought he was pretty good. You know, I think his length is something that interests me probably more at end of games when you decide what matchup to put him on. Are you hoping to see him shoot more jumpers tonight like he did? Um, I always hope that he shoots more jump shots, especially in the preseason where he can feel more comfortable you know, shooting it perhaps with not as much uh, um, repercussions uh, to shoot it freely, play freely. But I thought he was good tonight. I think, um, I think, like I say, the area that interests me the most is him having a better understanding, a growing understanding of how to take our structure and, and, and the team and make it work for us and for him. He was aggressive at the basket, especially against Baines. What do you say to him about wanting to drive but also being careful with being called for the offensive fouls? Well, it gets back to the turnovers are an area that we, in the past, you know, you had a decision to make. You had a bunch of young guys. You wanted to play fast. You know, you turned your head a little bit to them in exchange for playing with more freedom. That, that, that can't happen this year. You know, we really have to pay more attention to the turnovers. Tonight was poor. The last game was good with 14. Tonight we ended up with 24. Part of the turnover evolution is not traveling on catch goes, go catches, and the other part is jump stops in the lane. And uh, his Australian friend, uh, fellow Aussie, took charges, Aaron Baines, and we got to continue to grow the jump stop, avoiding, you know, the collision and coming into maybe a more controlled uh, environment. How do you think of the uh, Mayor's game tonight? I think. The guys that we, hadn't, we didn't have last year, when you looked at Jared, when you looked at JJ, when you looked at Amir, those three guys were solid. They, they were, uh, you know, NBA veterans. And, and those three especially stood out. I thought Jaleel had another good game, but those three new guys um, stood out to me. What did you see from uh, Justin Anderson tonight on both ends of the floor? Him trying to play with physicality defensively, him trying to move. I thought the last game, the ball stuck when he got it, played want to play more out of a rocket step. We, we call it .5, you get a half a second to shoot it, drive it or pass it, the ball can't stick. It did stick the last game, tonight it didn't. And I thought physically, you know, like he, he's got that body that he can take some hits and uh, physically I thought at times he finished well in traffic. Yeah, and, and I like the assists. I, I, you look at the stat, individual performances, um, those three new guys stand out along with Jaleel 
and uh, the three-point shooting, and a lot of them, you know, were were just obviously assisted. But it's just I think the ball moved quite well. Good minutes tonight, especially on the floor with Ben too. Would you be interested in having more of a true point guard play with Ben as well at times this year? At, at times, you know, it's you, you learn that. In a perfect world, you'd put, you know, four shooters around Ben, four shooters around Markel, and, you know, off you go. And, uh, you know, that's not TJ's strength. But he continues to just, you know, find ways to, to help us and, and win. And I think that, as I've said to us, not here, but at, at Camden, when you play with pace, real pace, it doesn't highlight sagging as much. You know, the game is played with speed. They can back off Ben. They can back off TJ in a half-court static situation, whereas I think they can't when you're moving around as easily. And in that environment, those two guys, because they are our best push guys, they really can push the ball. I think in that environment, they can coexist. Boston out rebounded you guys on the offensive end tonight by seven. I think Memphis had you by nine the other night. What can you guys do to control that side? I mean, some of it is effort-based. Some of it is uh, long rebounds. You know, our guards not leaking out, trying to get more things at the elbows. I think that, that when you come back in with, like, Saric and NB, that type of stuff will help as well. Uh, I look forward to seeing those rebounds on tape. As I said at the start, you know, the, the offensive rebounds and the turnovers, statistically the most disturbing. I think on tape you'll be able to give you maybe a better answer. That's my gut feel. I think that the thing that always happens from that is uh, some scoring option opens up. Normally the kick out threes to me stand out, but that was a that was an area that we were poor at tonight. A couple of times when Ben gave the ball up, he went right in for a duck in in the post. Is that like an automatic trigger or is that something to draw up? How do you kind of orchestrate that? A little bit of both, and it goes back to my comment earlier about him learning how to take our structure and make it work for him and the team. And that's part of the structure is how he can get off it and then try to bury somebody small or deep, you know, and have shooters on the backside that if they cheat, you can punish it. Or if they front it, you can go high lows, you know, swing it out to the top of the key and in. But I feel that that he needs to be put down there because he's, he's six foot ten and he can pass. He's a willing passer out of it. But the real trick is what do you do with the spacing around him? That thing you're talking about right there is part of our structure and available to him whenever he wants. Last one, guys. Brett, what do you do to kind of take care of like careless turnovers? Not the ones that are like the traveling that you have to work on because of the new way that they're looking at it or the offensive charges, but the ones where guys are kind of nervous and throwing it away. I mean, you're just trying to, um, you know, coach them in environments that is not blanket sort of punishment. You want to try to get to the point of why it happened. And, and I think that those turnovers that you're talking about, a lot of them are execution behind the turnover. You know, somebody didn't, you know, use a proper setup to create a lead. One of our bigs set a poor screen to free somebody up. People out front that are delivering a ball didn't sort of fake a pass to make a pass. I think that, you know, just flipping it over your ear or like willy-nilly just throwing it out of bounds, I don't see that, I think, as much. Um, I, I think the it, things that you're talking about, really, you can backpedal and find more the root of the cause if you look at execution of a screen or a setup. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thank you.